Welcome back. So we're still at the front of the car and uh, since last time I've tidied up a couple of areas. The radiator is now properly mounted in the car. My rubber isolator showed up and uh, I fabricated some little brackets off the radiator end tank. <laughs> sliding into the radiator. I'll show you that in a minute. I think the next job is to mount the battery. So there is the base for the spare wheel. And the spare wheel fits in there very nicely. All good. Now the battery. So plan on running one of these, this little Odyssey uh, PC680. Uh, great little battery. Always run this these style of battery in the other rally car. They, uh, they've got a really good shelf life. Um, they've got a reasonable capacity, but they can, they can, they can output some serious current. And uh, I don't think it'll have any problem turning over the six cylinder starter motor. Anyway, the plan, the current plan, is to mount the battery under there like that. I was thinking about putting it over here, but I've since changed my mind because I've got a couple of other items that will be taking up that real estate. So, centrally mounted battery under there. Time for some sheet metal. Let's make a little battery cradle. Right on that battery.
one battery tray with swage speed holes. Uh, I made this swage tool up ages ago for um, roll cage tags. Uh, it's not the deepest swage in the world, but uh, it does the job. These little ears are uh, to actually attach the battery, so I'll have a little plate coming across the battery with a couple of M6 bolts going down. They are a little bit anemic. In my original plan, I was going to run another strip of 1mm steel across here with some beads rolled in it uh, for extra strength and I wanted to use my bead roller again uh, but as I was making it, it just got so strong I realised that it didn't need that uh, so I added another this other set of, of holes uh, and rather than a whole strip I've just got these little tags I'm going to spot weld it to the bottom and weld it to the ears that drill a couple of holes, probably use some nut certs, and uh, then we can install it into the car. Oh, yeah, and it does still actually fit the battery, which is quite important. Alright, you can probably see that. That should give you an idea of how bad it is. Alright, so the one here. And I'm um, pretty much as far out, I'm at the almost three and a half inches. So that's 30 walking. This thing will break a lot of end drills, probably result in poor surface tests. I don't even know where to start. You guys can have some fun, right? So, first of all, other than the break, this thing definitely needed some kind of like a tail stop for a city. On top of that, I'm not running my separate full power at least. So I've given it a quick tidy up, uh, added a couple of little stops to stop the battery sliding forward. Very nice. So now it's time to chuck some uh, little nutserts in uh, using my comically oversized nutsert gun. Uh, last time I used this, I took this rubber band off and the thing opened up, hit me in the face and gave me a blood lip, so... Safety first. Blood lip avoided. So, with the battery in, the last thing I want to do before I look at mounting it in the car is to make the, uh, I don't know what to call it, the bracket, the, the, the thing that goes across there to uh, just hold the battery down. And I think I will use this nice aluminium U channel that I use for the, uh, the brackets on the radiator, uh, it's about the right width, uh, drill a couple of holes for the bolts, um, maybe give it a nice uh, triangular sort of profile and yeah, probably check a couple of speed holes in the bottom of it. No, so I didn't say mistakes. Any deviation from the dovetail size I want in this part, I can just make up for in the main part. Anyways, 10 millimeter. Try battery everyone loves an aluminium bracket with speed holes and the final piece of the puzzle is this little bar goes across the mounts for the steering rack with an integral uh, ground pin that's still a little bit hot from welding. Anyway, check into the car. Okay, looks like we've got a bit of ninja welding ahead of us, but uh, hopefully not too bad. Just gonna tack that brace bar in, and I'll pull the tray out, weld all around, 
Tray back in, weld it up, and move on to the next job. So another jump in time, sorry about that, ran out of batteries for the camera. Really need to talk to the crew about getting better organised. The battery is in, the, I've managed to squeeze two 12 inch thermo fans onto the back of the radiator. They're sitting on a little shelf I've welded to the bottom of the rad and I'll use the little pull ties at the top to uh, finish that off. I've also rejigged the inlet and outlet of the radiator to clear the chassis rail. And as you can see, it's all starting to get fairly tight in there, but uh, we've still got more to squeeze in. And the next thing on the list is these two Davis Craig electric water pumps. These things are fantastic. I ran one on the last rally car and it never missed a beat. Uh, the biggest advantage of the electric water pump is that you've decoupled it from the engine, so it's no longer limited to spinning at the engine RPM. So that means when you're idling and you've got no airflow through the radiator, these things can be going flat out. And when the car's going flat out and you've got a heap of airflow, uh, you can wind them back and uh, just have them ticking along. Maybe even save the engine a few, uh, a few ponies. They're usually pretty easy to fit, but this car's going to be a little bit tricky. They're designed to be mounted between the radiator and the engine. These will still be mounted between the radiator and the engine, however the radiator is normally next to the engine, not at the other end of the car. Apparently it's not a good idea to rigidly mount them off the chassis. Um, issues with thermal expansion and contraction. So they're designed to just hang in the radiator hoses themselves to provide the actual mounting. So uh, a bit of trickery, I think, is going to occur to uh, get them suitably, suitably positioned in this vehicle. Right, so after going around and around in circles on possible positions, I've settled on sticking the water pump around this location. A lot of aluminium tubes are going to be fabricated to make this happen, but the first one I want to concentrate on is this one here to go to the radiator. To uh, help out with the support of the water pump, I'm going to make up a little saddle, cut and uh, grind a relief in this bar, drop the saddle in and weld it all up. I uh, want the saddle to be pretty strong to uh, make up for the, little, the, 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 the space I'm taking out of this bar. So I'll probably machine up a tube of quite a thick wall thickness, um, put some uh, grooves in it for the ties that will hold the tube into the saddle, uh, and then split that tube in the bandsaw. Um, Drill some holes, again for the, uh, the tie that will hold the tube into the saddle and then grind out the section, clean it up, weld it in. That's the plan anyway, so here we go. So now we're getting somewhere. Got both the pumps mounted in the car, they look quite good. Saddle clamps have worked out really nicely. On to making the plethora of aluminium tubes required to connect it all up. Uh, I'm going to attack, I think, the outlet of this pump first. Uh, it's going to go out here, 90 degrees down, and then back into the centre of the car to connect to the centre line tubes that run back to the engine. Uh, I'm going to do this one first because I want to get the pump as close to this bar as possible and it's going to be dictated by the 90 degree bend I'm going to put in here. It would have been really easy just to rotate the pump around and getting the outlet 
pointing down in the direction I actually want to go. But I think this cooling system is going to be pretty tricky to bleed anyway, and I don't want to make it more complicated. Leaving the pump this way means oh, this is still the highest point of this sort of section and I can run a little bleed screw on the top of the aluminium tube there on both pumps. So hopefully that will aid the bleeding process. Anyway, uh, on to the bandsaw to uh, make up a few more little tube bits and pieces. And that's because we know people lie, we know people are mistaken. We know that eyeglasses are a relatively new, new, new invention and that people didn't always see them. So a fair bit more cutting, welding, measuring, then cutting again, because you should measure before you cut, and then welding. We've got two water pumps and all associated plumbing installed. It would have been a hell of a lot easier to run a single water pump, but decided to go with two um, because with the big distance between the engine and the radiator in this car, um, well, typically there's quite a large pressure drop there, and with two water pumps in series, um, that effectively doubles the, the pressure in the system to uh, hopefully cope with that pressure, pressure drop. And the other reason I wanted to run two was redundancy. If one water pump fails, then uh, I think we should be able to at least limp home on the second one. So with two water pumps, two electric fans, and uh, the two fuel pumps I'm planning to run, uh, this thing should have more redundancy than a 747. And uh, redundancy is... Um, It's pretty important. Cheers.